Hi, today is September 27th of 2012. This is Lucky Smith reporting for Starver News, and I'm here at Flappers in Claremont with... Richard Weiss. Richard, I understand that you're a comedian, actually. We saw you host the show tonight. And hopefully you still think I'm a comedian. <laughs> you're very funny. Thank you. How long have you been doing comedy now? Uh, I've been doing it about five years. I had a steady job. I was head of a company, and I came out here from New York City, basically to clean up from drugs and alcohol. I'm, my mom's, my, a lot of my family from my mother's side, actually right. all my family from my mother's side, is still in New York. Oh, East really? Yeah, great town, yeah. but when I got out here, I sobered up. I had free time. So everybody comes to Cali and get sober? Rehab? Uh, it seems that way. I got away from places that were not good for me, and I didn't yeah. know anybody here. So my first year of sobriety, I took a comedy class, okay. mostly for writing, and then I just got on stage and, and, and rolled. And then I also do recovery comedy, so I go around to rehabs and homeless shelters. I do a lot of charity work. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, it's rewarding. Do you, do you miss the corporate life, or do you still do that, or...? I, uh, I'm retired. I, I did have, you know, I'm, uh, I do comedy now. That's I wrote a book. I'm going to be in a, I wrote a comic book with Tim, we wrote it. And What's the name of the book? Where can people find that? It's called Weisscracks, and you can go to my website, Stand Up Guy Comedy. Okay. And uh, you can find the link there. It's on Indie Planet. Okay. And I'm in the process of doing another comic book, so. So, what's the comic book? Is it just like jokes, or is it stories, or? It's basically like the Far Side meets Mad Magazine, little humorous cartoons. Okay, got it. Some of it based on my stand-up, and some just done for, uh, it's not intellectual humor, it's just laugh and, and like, laugh. Shits and giggles? That's basically, that's right. And so, you, you've been doing comedy now for five years, can you give us some names of places that you have performed at, or sure. how's it been for you? Um, it's been it's been beyond my wildest dreams. You know, for a short time I didn't take it serious at first, but things happened where I toured the country. I went back to New York, performed there. I performed with Open for Eddie Griffin, did oh, shows wow. with Dane Cook, and people that I looked up to. Um, yeah. And I actually uh, did a show in Pennsylvania. My dad was in the front row, and I uh, he had never seen me perform. And at the end, I did a few dad jokes. Told him to stand up, they gave him a big hand, and I couldn't have ever thought of that, so hey, it was great. We're starting the second show, so we have to step outside. All right, uh, getting heckled. Yeah, we're getting heckled. All right, let's. Uh... That's me, Tim Chismore of Championship Comedy and NakedAlienMasker.com. I'm Tim Chismore. I'm a big fan of Richard Weiss. He's taught me everything I know. Okay, um, we're gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and just walk out since we're starting the recording. Um, what a buzzkill! Right. I'm just trying to grab the stage from it. <laughs> so, this is your your full time gig now. This is all you do is comedy. Uh, well, I, I do fundraisers. I do recovery shows. Basically, I uh, I go around and perform at rehabs and stuff. That's my niche because I'm in recovery. And she disappeared, my lady. Take care. Oh, okay. She's in the bathroom. But she knows me walking out. Okay. Yes, thank you. Thank I'm you. testing you. You're honest. So, um, what advice do you have for eBay starting out in comedy? Starting out? Yeah. Try to get some support and write down an act. Thanks, Matthew. Take care, buddy. Try to try to know what you're going to say before you get up there. People think they can be funny, but. If you don't have a structured act and you get on stage, it's not easy as just making jokes with your friends, you know. And it's the rare person that could just go up there and improvise. And it's not really an art that's appreciated either. Uh, it's like, not. It's been kind of. It's like one of the lowest paying, from what I understand from a lot of people who tell me. It's low. Well, the people that are on top make a lot of money, but the room up top is very small. But I've made actually money. Um, I don't really plan to make, but I've made enough to feel, you know, confident that I've. I've got something for my effort. Well, you've toured. I mean, I've Googled no, you, so you've done a lot of shows for me. Yeah. For being in five years in, in the industry, this is really good. It was kind of like right. one day you're like, okay, I'm going to do comedy, and you actually you survived. It's, for five years, I never realized what was that. It just rolled, you know, and it's, it's up and down. One day you'll be doing a show with 500 people, and sometimes I could be in a rehab or a shelter for five people, but sometimes and, those are more rewarding if you get them the to laugh and feel better and they're down and out, you know, it's 
It's a gift. It's like giving back. No, I, I, you know. I totally get that. That's, do you have any upcoming shows, any charities that you're working on Oh, yeah, I do. Now? I have a show at Camino Real Playhouse uh, coming up next month. I have a fundraiser for Deborah's organization, CASA, up in Palm Springs. We're negotiating that now. Okay. And uh, since I moved, I've kind of sl slacked down on the shows because I relocated to Palm Springs. Oh, God, that's far. It's far, and I'm working God. on a, a book now, and I've, I've written something for a recovery book that they're thinking of printing and working on my second comic book. I, I wrote a joke book I'm in, so if you go to my website, you'll see that. And I also write for other comedians. And uh, I wrote a little bit of a sitcom for a friend of mine who's been on Carson and Leno. We're pitching that. Oh, I'll keep cool. it quiet right now. But it's all about creating. It's not just doing jokes. There's so many levels to go with comedy. And that's what I'm looking to do. And for me, I do it because I love it. I don't want to, I'm not a, about getting famous or nothing. You know, it would be fine to be known. But some people are in it for the wrong reasons. Fame to further their acting career. and. They'll well, steal it's, jokes. It's different for you because you made it. You've made your money. You know what I mean? I mean, you were... I'm pretty sure you were, you were financially wealthy and you were like, fuck this, I'm going to walk away from all this, I'm going to get clean. Mm -hmm. And when you get clean and you focus on yourself, that's when it's real. Right. And it's a gift it's just to get It's not about money there. anymore. Right. And when I was drinking and all, I couldn't get up there. I always wanted to do it, but you... You it don't just, drink anymore at all? I, I cut everything out. I, I do uh, coffee. That's probably my biggest vice right now. But for me, one drink could lead me back to cocaine or whatever else. And, you know, I, I was practically done. I was thinking of suicide when I came out here. I'd fallen off did a five-story building. Did you know anybody in California when you came out here? You just say, fuck it, we'll come to California? Or? Uh, I was sent here by an intervention. I didn't want to come. My uh, family got together. My mom had just passed. I started drinking every day heavy and, yeah. and they saw I was going downhill so one day I came out there was people in a room and they said we're sending you to California and it's gonna and I'm saying you well go rehab because yeah. you're going away and I said why don't you keep me here and I, I think what they want to do is get me away from familiar spots because yeah. everywhere in New York I've been partying and Studio 50 all those memories yeah here I had no memories so I, I came out here with nothing you never came out here before you never visit out here I, I was to Disney World or, or Disneyland a couple but I I never really been here more than you never partied out here never party never got drunk and you nobody coming out here it was just they threw me out here I can I understand how you feel because when my dad sent me to Staten Island you know how Staten Island oh, yeah. is yeah. I was like fucking flipping out. Right. It was kind of I, your I, thing. They'd be like, I, yeah. your family sent you to the West, my family sent me to the East. Uh, well, I, I yeah. I couldn't even stand. I, I, my <laughs> parents lived there for, there's nothing to do there. There's that Verrazano Bridge. And exactly. And then like, I didn't even live in the poor side of Staten Island. Like my whole family's like in the Toad Hill, whatever. Uh, and I'm like. Right. A lot of mafia guys around there, I noticed. You don't want to. I, I didn't get to do shit out there. <laughs> no. It wasn't fun. No, for me. I, I don't like Staten Island. I like New York City and the Bronx where I'm from, but Staten Island. I could do it out. Yeah. I'd rather be in Riverside. <laughs> and that's saying a lot. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to close up. Um, do we give any show dates? Or where can people find you on Twitter, Facebook? Uh, yeah, if you go to my website, you'll find my Facebook, uh, my Twitter. It's all there. Standupguycomedy.com. Okay. And I'll post gigs. You know, some gigs I do private shows. Okay. I do recovery shows. I do a lot of... Uh, charity work and I'll be doing a fundraiser for Deborah's uh, organization CASA which is for foster kids and if we don't help them who will and they, they really have very little support right now so that's what my focus is and it just seems like God puts good things in my life you know like even your interview I'll meet good people and that's how it's been yeah. and well I, I understand I'm, I'm in recovery myself it's been about 10 years oh, yeah, an hour <laughs> no no that's 10 totally years that's I, right. But the only thing is, is that um, I still drink, and so some people will argue right. like, "Oh, well, you're not really in recovery." But well, I've been ten years clean. Right. Yeah. For me, my drug of choice was cocaine, but if I drink, it would open doorways. So I realized, for me, I, if I, I can get away with it. You know? No, I think about it. Like, do I abuse it? Am I trading it off? I mean, this right. is like this is going a little bit too deep, and we're going to lose right. I, I got you. But yeah. You, you know, everyone knows when they're going out of control, and it, everyone's different. But for me, yeah, I, I choose to do nothing because it could lead back to to death. And I've got a great life today, and uh, I wouldn't have it unless I was sober. So. And I'm glad. Thank you for your honesty, because there's going to be somebody's listening to you, and that's going to inspire them to get clean. Yeah, and I'd be instead glad to do shows of, for them. Yeah. Instead of being, what makes it worse is when you're. It's a secret. 
Right, and you feel yeah, shameful. The best thing is we're, we're not perfect. Tell everybody. Yes, and my story, if I could do it, it took me 25 years to get one year of sobriety. And I've got seven years now and a half through the grace of God. I never thought I'd, I thought I'd die as an addict. You know? but something happened, and uh, it's a miracle. And that lets me do what I do. So I like giving back. I have a lot of recovery shows where they're me. I can relate. I do a lot of recovery jokes. It's a great feeling to have somebody come up and say, you made me happy for at least an hour. And, and maybe I will inspire. So that's the gift. I think you do. Well, this is Lucky Smith signing out. Thank you, Richard, for Thank your you. time. Okay. Thank you. Put that down. Handshake.